our shield and beam, and we raise our hands, a million things that burn and burn with praise. Oh, tell of his might, oh, sing of his grace, who throws the light, who stands up in his face, who stands up and bloody thunder God's form, and darkness is back from a wind and their souls can bleed. Frail children, lost in the evil of his plan, the scripture this morning comes from Romans. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Just as it is written, for, they, for thy sake we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we were overwhelmingly conquered through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that our power comes from you. Father, we need to dedicate ourselves to use the power that you give us. Each and every day, Father, that we may serve you and may be a shining example. Father, we just ask that as we go through our tribulation and trials, that we remember that there is a beautiful light at the end of the tunnel, Father, and that we strive for the tunnel light. Be with us here as we meet in this building, for this congregation, as we worship you today. We ask that everything we do will be in your honor and in your glory. We ask, Father, that you bless the communion time, the time of singing and praise, Father, and the morning worship. We give them all to you and ask you to bless them and bless and watch every each other. We bless in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. Our next greatest image, he is exalted. He is exalted, the king is exalted on God. Oh, praise him. He is exalted forever, exalted on God. Praise him. He is the Lord of Exalted, 
He is exalted the King is exalted. Some of our prayer time this morning. Uh, we will be using Jesus' name above all names. And uh, following that, Brother Brian will be our heart's sister. As we come to uh, our updates and uh, prayer needs, we ask you to watch over the Lord's church. Pray for the Lord's church. Pray for those who have met and have met without resistance. Pray for us as we be here, and as the time periods move on, and as the congregation keeps everything that is done is done in God's honor and glory, and that we will be a shining example for Him. Also, of those who have fallen away and those who need to make a decision, touch their hearts, and bring them closer to you. Uh, Joyce Caper is in room 822 with Weird Medical Center, and uh, Okay. Get there. Okay, that's the start. Uh, Jane Poe for success and healing during her doctor's care. Uh, Dorothy Yerdo is now home. Uh, that's Edie's mom. So we thank God for that. Just ask you to continue to keep her in your prayers. Uh, Carl Peggy Ryan for continued prayers at Carl Goddard's cancer. Bernard Renzi, who is now home following surgery. Uh, Joe Case is he consults with doctors upon the return of his cancer. Also, uh, Donald here to each brother, possibly some serious health related concerns. Uh, Laura Fry for personal well being and direction. Bessie for some upcoming medical tests this week. Uh, the family that's welcomed old boy John the Brown Lake Christian Service Camp this past week. His name was Melvin Overby. Overby, and he was from Pickerington. Uh, some anonymous requests, and many others. I also want to add for Bill Hunt. I uh, may remember Bill. Bill just spent the first four days of this week in the hospital um, with some pretty weird symptoms. As you know, Bill has had a kidney transplant, and they spent most of the week trying to make sure he was ready to stay the one he's got. But so far, they are going okay. I'm asking to continue to pray for Bill that uh, he does continue to improve. Also, J.B. Stark has a heart cap Monday. Finally, some news on J.B., although it's not the greatest, but at least the parents we know. So we ask you to please pray for J.B. Um, well, he said he asked the doctor, I really need this, and his wife looked at him and said, yeah. That's in the widow maker, you need it. And so, thank God for her smartness and him listening. And also for Hunter, uh, he's got some tests coming up this week, so I ask you to keep Hunter your prayers. And a uh, friend of Jeanette's, John Inman, uh, thanks everyone for the prayers, as he is doing much better uh, with a vein problem that he had, so I ask you to keep John in your prayers. Prayer here this morning is. Uh, Jesus, name above all names, which will rhyme with this prayer. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, the
what he did on the cross for us. The offering of sacrifice. This bread represents his body. What his body went through for us. And let's just take a moment and see what he's done with all this grace and blessings he put upon this world for us. How he set the cave wall. And as every Sunday I come here, I watch him make it. I see this family come together to come to your table for the blessing and the cleansing of your blood and the bread for the healing glory. It amazes me over and over again what your son did for all of us. And in some small way, Lord, let us see the love and the grace of the family bonding that your son created here for us today. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, what a true pleasure it is to be in your house today. I thank you so very much for this great country we live in, where we can come and worship you so freely. It's also my prayer that we will begin to understand, as we have talked about, how we're blended. The old school has to blend with the new school, and we need to realize that you love us. And that is the reason why you give us grace. It's because you want us to live with you forever. My question is, is, how much do we love you? Are we willing to put you first and foremost in all our thoughts and our prayers and everything else? Or are we like most of the world? We've got one foot in, one foot out. You know what I mean? We've got one foot in with you, and we've got one foot in that world. It's my prayer that we will begin to realize how much Satan has influence over us. And that we need to start taking a stand and stand up for you. We're not asked to go out and preach and on the corner or anything else. All we're asked to do is to live what we preach. Also, I give you thanks that our, your son came and died for us. What a blessing and what a grace that is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Christian family, for the honor, the privilege, and the freedom we have to be in your house and praise your awesome grace. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come to the Lord and worship you and to be able to things that you have done for us. And most of all, I thank you for your son to give that ultimate sacrifice and die on that cross for our sins. As we cut this time of our service to give back to you, let's give back to the very open hearts. Bless those who came here. Bless those who just didn't so fortunate to have given. This is Jesus Christ. Amen.
to be what? It's been a few months ago. That's right. The power point is growing down because you don't look like you turned 60. You want to sit down? You turned uh, 80. When did you turn 80? In here, can you can I hold the microphone in front of your face? Can you just kind of hold it right there when you talk? You can. And uh, you're an 80 years old, came up to senior citizens. You've been in the game for a year or two ago. Bessie and Lily and I and Jeanette and one of the hosts came up and said, It'd be so nice if your wife, daughter, and granddaughter could join us. <laughs> And is this said Jeanette and Anita, 1956? Oh, no, no, is this Anita? Is this? Uh, yeah. This is Anita, okay. She's got a Now, 
We have one of our fans in the background. <laughs>
Thank you so very much. Jesus says in his speech, he's speaking a parable, the 
that God is often taught is a it's a heavenly story with an earthly application. And so Jesus speaks this parable. He says the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 22, verse 1, may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent out his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were what? Unwilling to come. And he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat, my, my fat and livestock, are all butchered. Everything's ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they what? Paid no attention. They went their way, one to his own farm, another to his business. The rest seized his slaves and mistreated them and killed them. But the king was enraged, and he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main highways, and as many as you find there, invite to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out in the streets and gathered together all they found, both evil and good, and the wedding hall was what? Filled with their guests. You'd think the story would end right there, but it doesn't. To me, that would be a good place to end. The house is full. Praise God. They finally came to the wedding feast, but it's not the end of the parable. Then the king came in to look over the dinner guests. He saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. He said to him, friend, how can you come in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. The king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, throw him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let's read together. For many are called, few are chosen. God wants everybody to be saved. He doesn't want anybody to be lost. And so he would send, when he sends out an invitation to his wedding feast, which in our mind is the, the ultimate heaven itself, he invites everybody. The parable seems to unfold as he calls those who were, first of all, verse 3, unwilling to come. From my understanding of, of history and Jesus' ministry, he is, he is inviting his own people to come. He's inviting the Jewish nation to come. And they basically saying, I don't want to come. Thanks, but no thanks. And so he sends out more invitations. I mean, you've been to a wedding and you received something, so you knew it was a wedding. It was called a wedding invitation. Sometimes they go in the trash, sometimes they don't, sometimes they get misplaced. You find a ball, well, I forgot about that. It was yesterday. But the invitation is given. So there's more invitations again. Got the dinner ready, got all the food is ready. Come to the wedding feast. They paid no attention. You know anybody out there who's not willing to turn to God for the day? You know anybody when the invitation is given? If they pay, no. We're living in a society today where people are totally disconnected from life. I'll be walking through Walmart or going down the road. I'm more often than Walmart, but you, you almost get run over by people as they're walking into the store and they got their head buried in their phone. They're totally disconnected from life. They're really just doing a car drive by me, and I see them coming, I see that they're looking at the phone, and they never once glance up as they go by me. I'm so tempted sometimes to go, <laughs> and just kind of scare them, you know, I'd rather run along. I won't do that. But people will pay no attention. And then there were those that were sending out invitations that they were mistreated. They were mistreated and killed. And I'm thinking of what the Jews did to Jesus when they killed him. I'm thinking of what they did to those Christians in the early church, the early century, like Antipas in the book of Revelation that was killed by his persecutor. And the Bible says the king was enraged. Now who's the king in this story? King would be God sending out invitations to everybody, He's not willing for anyone to perish. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and they're paying no attention. They're not wanting to come, and others are actually mistreating my servants, and they're killing my servants, and so the king is enraged. He sets the city on fire, and it sounds a lot like the destruction of Jerusalem in the year AD 70. And then he sends out more invitations. And he goes out and finds the good and the bad, the bad and the ugly. 
And it sounds like the Gentiles. Mostly us, unless you're Jewish, they would refer to us. Now he's sending out invitations for those who were never included in the first place. And aren't you glad now, by his grace, we are included? And the house is full. And I'm thinking that would be a good place to end the story. But how about Jesus? Aren't you glad? Because if I, were, if I was the judge, if I was the one that set the standard, a lot of you and a lot of people in this world would not make it to heaven because I wouldn't think you were ready for it. And there would be a lot of people that would go to heaven and should go to heaven. Because I would walk in and I would walk in and it's like, oh, looks like we're all here, bro. But did you notice when the king, did you notice when the king, amen, did, did you notice when the king came in, he looked over the dinner guests. How would you feel today if Jesus himself came and looked you straight in the eye? I remember when I was a little baby, I felt uncomfortable when I was sleeping on my bed in, in my room downstairs. My mother would come in, I was like three or four years old. And if I knew she was going to come in the room, I felt so insecure. I would almost quit my adoption. I don't know what it was, but I just felt like I needed to turn with my back to the door and I would look toward the wall and pretend I was asleep when mom would come in to look at me and see if I was okay. I felt un uncomfortable with her growing near to me with her love. But God, God wants to grow near to you with his love and you feel so uncomfortable because you know you're a sinner and you know you're unclean. And if, if I didn't get my back turned to the door, if I'm still facing the door, when she would come in, I would close my eyes and pretend the best I could be asleep because I felt so uncomfortable with her looking at me. The king came in and was looking over the dinner guest. He saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. How can you tell? Apparently they had some sort of Attire they would be wearing. The Bible says in Galatians 3:27, for as many of us as, as have been baptized into Jesus Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. Now I'm missing something this morning that I normally wear. I don't know what it's called. So it's sports jacket. And I often illustrate that when we're baptized into Christ, I put on my coat and we're clothed with Christ. This man was not dressed in wedding apparel, and he was coming in on his own terms. What happened to him? The picture illustrates it. You can Google it. You can Google Matthew chapter 22, the parable of the wedding feast. You'll find that exact photo. In fact, that entire photo with the title. You'll see that. I didn't even type anything for the title. That's the whole picture you'll see on the internet. And you see the wedding feast. And you see those who were invited and who came according to the terms of the one who invited him. And here you see this man that was not dressed in wedding apparel. And they tied him up. And they carried him out. And Jesus says, throw him into the place where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where's that? That's the hell far. And this, this man who thought he could sneak in to God's kingdom on his own terms. He was found out and cast out. And then the parable closes by saying, verse 14 from where I got the title this morning, Many are called, but few are chosen. And with that, I have three questions this morning. I'm going to start with the third question. So pay attention. I don't want you to pay ten minutes when I say the first question. You say, oh, no, he's, he's only on the first question. I'll start with number three. And then I'm going to go to number two. And then I'll go to number one. And when I get to number one, we'll be nearer in the end, right? Not the beginning. The third question is, will you be among the few? In other words, will you be saved? Will you be in heaven? Will you be on the right side when Jesus says, come you who are blessed in my Father? Will you be those who are saved who have done the will of the Father, who will do the will of the Father, and who are going to do the will of the Father way right after the will of the Father is revealed to you through the Word of God? Can you know if you will be among the few? Here are some scriptures that you're taking notes this morning. Take these home and be assured of the sacred writings. In 1 John, verse chapter 2, verse 3. 1 John 2, verse 3. This is how we know that we've come to know God if we keep his commandments. You can also know in Hebrews 12, verse 23. Hebrews 12, verse 23 talks about those whose names are enrolled in heaven. You can read it also in Revelation 20. 
In verse 15, the Bible says, If any man's name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Those are just three verses. But here's my understanding. On December 7th, 1969, when I was baptized into Jesus Christ, my name was added to God's roll book. It was by His grace that the message was given. And I submitted by hearing the gospel, believing in Christ, I confessed him before an audience like you, my church family, and him, and I was buried with him in baptism. And from what I understand the scriptures to teach, my name was enrolled. And there's nothing, when, you, when you're on vacation and you pay those hours of vacation and you travel all day and you're tired and you're weary, you go in and you make reservations and they say something like, sorry, but we cannot find you. They have no record. <laughs> Can you imagine getting to the gates of heaven like that? Weary and worn, thinking you are among the chosen. The tragic reminds me that you were not dressed in wedding clothes. You can know. A lot of times when I ask people, will you be among the few? Will you be in heaven? Are you going to heaven? I hear a lot of Christians say, I'm not sure hope so, but I'm not sure. You can be sure. He doesn't want you to live unsure. At the same time, Jesus said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, but they won't. They won't enter to heaven because they didn't do what he commanded. Which leads me to the second question. Remember, we started with the first question. We started with the third question. This is so dyslexic. We started the second by the way, did a good job. I forgot to tell you, for whatever reason, that computer, line those songs out right for and you're all numbered out of the room. Weird, good job, Dolly. I don't know what happened to Dr. Dolly. Whatever. That's, that's my CD truth or A play, A D taking it for a moment. You all still there? <laughs> I'll come back. Here I'm back. <coughs> Question two. What will determine the basis for my judgment before the judgment seat of Christ? Here are some scriptures that you need to have in your personal study this week. Book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. The next verse is John, chapter 12, verse 48. And the last two verses, one is a verse, it's John 4, 24. John 4, 24, and the last is actually a chapter, Philippians chapter 2. What will be the basis for my judgment? How will I be judged? I saw the great throne and him who sat upon it from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, a few of me. Well, their books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. That'd be the five of That'd be the book in which your name is written if you're saved. The dead were judged from the things which are written in the books according to the deeds. There's going to be other books there, and it's going to be those books that contain our deeds, what we've done in life. You remember that guy asked you on the double line, and he screamed and cussed at him? That's in that book. Remember that lady that jumped in front of you at Walmart, you know, that had up two baskets, and all you had was a gallon of milk, and you're in a hurry because you're also carrying a bag of ice with you? You know, real mean spirited about that? Right. Whatever. Do you remember that time that you took a cup of water to somebody in the name of Jesus? Or you took some food to somebody who just said, I'm praying for you? Or whatever, right? If you're here today, it's in, it's in the notebook. The book that has all your deeds. What about all my sin? Well, don't forget, if you confess your sins to the Father of the Christian, what happened to those sins? They're all gone. That's in that book, too. That you came to God on His terms. And so all the bad things, those are like the way of good things to remember. Aren't you glad? And so that, that's going to be the basis for our judgment. And the sea gave up the dead, and which in his death and Hades gave up the dead, and then everyone was judged according to their deeds. Death and Hades was thrown into the lake of fire. That's the second death. By the way, um, I'm going to be speaking with somebody this week with an act. I want you to pray for me because they're petrified of water, and that's one of the reasons why I have to be baptized. Because I'm scared of water, and I don't want to get hurt. I'm going to tell them, I'm going to try to tell them, show them, listen. Without Jesus Christ, you're going to be in a lake forever. If you're scared of water, you're going to be in a lake forever. I'm going to be in a lake of fire. I'd rather be buried in the lake of water just for a few seconds than you to escape that fire from the gospel. Make sure you repent before you go into the water. Make sure you believe. And then make sure you're willing to live the life and be faithful in death afterwards. If anyone's name is not found written in the name of the book of life, or in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. I remember I said as a kid, I 
to the remember that. Jesus said in John 12, 48, the word I spoke will be your judge. In John 4, 24, it says, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And Philippians chapter 2 says, let this attitude be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. So what's going to be the basis for judging me? It's not going to be my judgment. When I say, listen, those that do the will of the Father, they'll be in heaven. Those who don't do the will of the Father will not. And you say to me, you're judging. You're right, I am. John 7, 24, I'm judging righteous judgment, which is what the Word of God teaches. I'm not judging according to, according to appearance. That man that slipped into the wedding feast, he thought by appearances he had faith. But whatever he was wearing or whatever was in his heart, because we're not just judged by the outward appearance. We're judged from those scriptures that I gave you. We're judged by the deeds of our life. We're judged by the words of Christ. We're judged by our attitude. Anybody ever tell you that your attitude is real great? Not what you were thinking about. We'll be judged by those things. But a lot of people try to negotiate their way in. I've heard them say, and they told me this. Well, I'll take it up with God when I get there. I'm going to negotiate with him. I'm going to tell him how good I was. I know I didn't go to church. And I know I didn't tithe and give offerings and all that. I know I didn't even try to win a single soul to Jesus Christ and have baptism things. Ugh, awful. I'll take it up with God when I get there. And they've been so good at negotiating their way through life with lies and deceit and all these things and fooling people, they think they're going to do it with God. Our modern, doc, modern day culture has a word for that. Do you know what it is? Not. That's going to happen. When we see those people out there, we've got to quit deceiving ourselves because I'm not sure the church even believes that people are lost without Jesus. How can we the guy with everything? It'll do for now. And we don't understand if a person isn't covered by the blood of Jesus Christ but not walking daily with him, they're lost. So when you were raised in the church, I'll have you know until I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord, there was no way he could be my Savior. And I was just as lost as the rest of them out there. How about you? I was among the many. Now I'm among the few. Because many go into the gate of destruction. Few go in the way of life. What's the motto for the Marines? Ready? What's the first thing it says? The. The few. Then the proud. The Marines. Right? The few. Why so few? Because so few are among the Christ. So if you were willing to do what the commander says, a faithful army soldier. So that was question number two. Question number three. Then I mean, you were already there. I'm just reviewing. Okay. Okay. Question number three. Will you be among the few? Question number two. What will be the basis for my judgment? Question number four. Actually, you've already answered it. Why are there so few? It will be judged. Why are there so few who will be judged? Let me ask you this. How many have been invited? Everyone. As I said this last week, we ought to be a church for everyone. How many people does God want to perish? No one. So when Jesus died on the cross, how many can be saved if they'll do what he says? They'll just agree to the terms. From what I understand of this passage and other passages, the reason so few are chosen is because they're seeking to come to God on their own terms. They insist to have their way. Sang a song for Bessie that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. I was going to sing it today, and I'm not going to want to hear anything more for it. And I may do it in the future. This song that Frank Sinatra made so popular. I'll do it. And what I want to do, whether I'm here or in a revival somewhere, is I want to sing it the way Frank Sinatra is singing. Don't tell Betsy. But then I'll bring her up on stage. And I'll sing it in my lyrics. And the way it closes is, I'll love you always. Come to God on his terms. Not my way, but his way. His way. And they try to come to God on their own terms. How about the children? How about you? The jailer of Philippi, in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, around midnight, said, Believe, 
don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved. Paul and Silas went into that jailer's home and taught the word of the Lord to his family and promises and they were baptized at the same hour of the night. Have you been baptized? Do you believe? Do you believe? Have you been baptized? He was the same hour of the night. If you have not yet, why not? What's preventing you? In Acts chapter 2, when the crowd asked, What must we do? Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That was on a Sunday. I don't know how long Peter preached. If I'm not mistaken, the service began around 9 a.m. and he was preaching, and they interrupted his message and wanted to walk. What do we need to do? And rather than try to feed everybody from Bonanza or Ponderosa and be first in line after the church service, the Bible said about 3,000 people were baptized that very day. They didn't wait. They didn't wait till Monday. They were baptized right then. How about you? And he, well, I don't know everything. I didn't know everything either when I was 11, 12 years old. I knew I was lost, but I knew I needed Jesus, and I knew, I knew that I believed, I knew that I wanted to live for him. I knew that baptism was the burial with Christ, and I knew that once I was a Christian, I'd go and suffer. I heard one kid got baptized just that he wanted to break the I want I want the bread in the in the cup, don't you? But then of course take the bread in the cup, maybe turn the light in up and the sun and then back. They were baptized that day, and you if not, why not? Why not? And then finally, Revelation 2, verse 10, the church of Smyrna was told, Be faithful unto death. I'll give you the crown of life. So the jailers sing out of the night. The, those in Acts 2, the same day. And then the church of Smyrna sang every day, 24 7, it's all about Jesus. And they were, are we, are you being faithful to the Lord? If not, why not? I have to ask myself that every day. I don't know how, how long it lasts. I want to last as long as possible. But I've been home and I haven't watched a bit of TV. The only TV I've watched is Channel 831. Or whatever it is, that's where you got it set. It's the way you do it. I'm going to take a chance somewhere down the line and go to foxnews.com and check real quick what the news is. But I'm not going to stay there long because I'm going to be driving down and not going to be. So depressing. I still, I still need to know what's going on out there. So I know what the battle is. I know what's fighting. I've seen it. But that man I told you about last week who was probably in his 30s, the preacher who was doing his first baptism at Elkhorn Valley Christian Service Camp, when he was baptizing him, there were about 200 of us men here standing and watching his baptism in the swimming pool in Elkhorn. And when he went down, his right arm was still sticking out of the water like that, with a little fancy watch. And that's the watch. So, how come I can see the watch when he's going under? So, his arm didn't go under. I thought, surely somebody will see something because he went to Holy Ferry. I know, I told you last week when I'm buried, if I'm still in this area, John Kirkland, if he takes care of the sermon, best he's not paying Clark Kirkland a dime until they pull me all the way under. They don't want to see my hands sticking up like a jump. By the way, if he's doing this, get a shovel real fast. I thought, surely, all these preachers here, somebody was going to say something about him not going all the way under. And I was a coward. I didn't say a word. I just stood there three rows back. Nobody said nothing. I thought, I ain't moving. I'm God, what do I do? What am I praying? What do I do? And everybody left. It about five or ten minutes. They were all off. And that preacher, and that young 30 year old fellow, so was still there. And I still stand there, dumbstruck. The preacher said, What do you think? The devil, the first baptism, and I was going to say, What do you think? God just answered my prayer. I said, well, it was really exciting. I said, the only thing is, I don't know if you know it or not, but his right arm didn't go all the way under. I'm waiting for the young fellow that got baptized to get a little mad and defensive and come up and beat me up and all that stuff. He said, his right arm didn't go all the way under. And the preacher said, what? I said, yeah, I know. I said, I don't know what you're doing. I said, if you didn't have the heart pull, it would be because of that. You must not have noticed it all the excitement, but his right arm. And I'm not saying the guy was going to help for that. But I am saying he wasn't very thin. If I knew my right arm didn't go on, you know what I'm doing with those CDs, right? I didn't know what this guy would do. And that young man said, I have not come this far to not do it right. He said, come on, bring your us out back in. They both hopped back in the water. And they reimbursed him. And this guy, he went all the way under for the Lord. Like that's one of his favorite. We're not saying that this morning, but they did baptize Jesse Taylor. Well, we can manage what? What? 
complete the people of God. Can you accept it then? We're going to sing a song. We all want God to save us, amen? Mightily save us. But He will not mightily save us until we're willing to mightily obey Him. Well, mighty to save us. Stand with me and make a decision today. If you decide to come forward to be baptized in Christ today, that's always an invitation, not just on Sunday, but every day of the week. The water's raining, we've got plenty of time to do it if the Lord doesn't return. But when you serve it this week, don't be afraid to know that you're going to live that day, John. Everyone needs compassion, but all that's never clean. Let mercy fall on the deep. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness, sorrow, and faithfulness. Love the Lord is all the time. The Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He was mighty to save. Your hand, of salvation. He knows his comfort and Jesus' comfort and Take me as I find all my fears and failures, in the mind I have been given, in my life and power, everything I believe in, now I have to serve and return, to the fact that you have
trouble with the ways of the outside landscape. So if you think you're able to walk down the street with those, go up to the door, knock on the door, and say, hi, my name is Peter, and the church of Christ here, just keep on the bike with someone who likes to come in and talk to you, talk to you, just hand it to them. Or if you don't want to talk to somebody who's building a long jacket in the front, they might shoot you. You could really use your help on that. Okay? Uh, church dinner tonight, if you're able to stay around, help set up. Maybe you want to start with three rows. Initially, we went three rows on that. We'll set up in the middle of the five. And we'll come in there and uh, get it. Hopefully, we'll bring out a baby. Are we getting anything else in that? Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot. I said it's over. I said it's over. Next week, we want to show more, more pictures. I love it when they get the printer board. But we heard 19 preachers in two hours. One from Thursday afternoon to two to four. They had what, 15? I think 15 out there. Four to four together. I want to take 11. 11 years old. And they did it like by the luck of the draw, who would go for a few minutes. <laughs> and uh, there he is. And I'm over there with bro. I'm telling you, what, a couple thousand people there. Well, no pictures in the video. So if you join us next week, just to get the spirit of it. They might even have a video. There's something like my video of him preaching. I don't know if they took a video of him preaching. It'll be on the DVD. That's in our home spot. We're going to order some of that online for ourselves. Uh, but uh, anyway, one of the choirs. Okay, so like, I'm just saying, it's not with standing up there for a good seat all. And uh, Roger, good to have you home. There you go. Hello, Mom. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's awesome. Being with us today. We do have our closing prayer here, Roger. Thank you all. Thank you. Good morning, I'm <laughs> 
thinks he came and didn't bail us. He thinks he came and didn't bail us. If we have, we have a crowd, we're going to be able to quit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can put it on the table when he dies. We get yeah. yeah, yeah. That way, but that way we had the movement at all. Yeah. 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 I know I'm going to take it home. I'm going to get them to make sure they work on them. Don't do water and drink them out in the trailer. And then I'll have them. We have a day where I'm running with them. Mark, Mark, and go. And I'll just put them in the trailer. All right. Mark, we're covered.